wherever you are on Earth, the magnetized needle of a compass will always point in the same direction. This occurs because of Earth's magnetism. What? Not according to this guy. Under the effect of Earth's magnetic field, the needle always points toward the North Magnetic Pole. No, there's no such thing as a North Magnetic Pole, and compasses point north for a very different reason. Well, according to this guy. It is still not well understood why Earth is magnetized. That's because it's not magnetized. Well, according to this guy. According to the most common theory, the phenomenon originates in the core at Earth's center. The core is made mainly of iron and nickel. In the inner core, these metals are in a solid state, while in the outer core, they are liquid and in constant motion. Under the influence of Earth's rotation, the liquid metals move in spiral currents. These motions generate Earth's magnetic field, according to a principle called the dynamo effect. <laughs> or the God denial effect. You see, science can't explain why compasses point north. Well, according to this guy. So, geophysicists made up this thing they call geomagnetism and expect us to believe that we have the equivalent of giant bed springs in the middle of our planet that magically make compasses face north. I mean, come on, we all know what's really down there. Do they really expect us to believe that Satan is mucking around in semi-liquid iron and nickel while tripping over gigantic bed springs? Oh, please. Meet Barry Smith science illiterate and self-proclaimed compass expert, creationist, religious conspiracy nut, and end-time eschatolatard, who, like every other end-time eschatolatard before him, was very confident that Jesus would be coming soon, within his lifetime. That all changed, of course, in 2002 when Barry was not caught up in the rapture, but instead became a corpse, God rest his soul. However, before Barry started staring at the lid of his coffin, he was kind enough to let us all know the true physics behind the electromagnetic force and why compasses point north, as he explains here. The Bible teaches there are three heavens. There's the, there's the earth. The first heaven would be the third, we'll call that the third heaven. That would be paradise. That's the clouds. That's right. According to Barry's atmospheric theory, a place like this actually exists. The second heaven is the starry heaven, the stars of God. Okay, before Barry gets to the first heaven, let's review Barry's perceived structure of the universe. According to his Smithian biblical science theory, the Earth is at the center of the universe. There's the, there's the Earth. The lowest layer of our planet's atmosphere is the third heaven. That's the clouds. And clouds are some sort of tropospheric Shangri-La. That'd be paradise. The seemingly endless vacuum of space and all that is in it that surrounds our planet's atmosphere in terms of Smithian biblical science theory is called the second heaven. The second heaven is the starry heaven, the stars of God. And according to Smithian cosmology, Although the second heaven is expanding and may be of infinite size, the distance in any direction between Earth's exosphere and the first heaven is somehow finite. So, what does all this have to do with compasses, the electromagnetic force, and the myth of geomagnetism? Well, according to this guy, the answers to these questions can be found within the physical laws emanating from the first heaven, as Barry explains here. And the first heaven is the throne room of God. Can anybody tell me where the first heaven is situated? On the sides of the north. That's why your compass points to the north. That is the throne room of God. Scientists cannot tell us why the compass points to the north. I'll tell you why. All things are held together from the north, from the throne room of God. Huh? Huh? What? Well, there you have it. 
Smithian Biblical Science Theory for the win. Barry Smith, armed with only a single black marker, a whiteboard, and his extensive reading and interpretation of one book, has, with one elegantly drawn detailed model of the true shape of the physical universe, not only revolutionized meteorology, astronomy, cosmology, and theoretical physics, he has debunked the myth of geomagnetism and solved the riddles of electromagnetism in general by being the only person on the planet who, through extensive research and a very vivid imagination, discovered that at least one of the perceived physical forces of nature is in fact nothing more than one of the fundy, magical powers of his god. How do we know that electromagnetism is a misnomer and is not what holds all matter together and is not one of the fundamental forces of nature, but instead one of the fundy magical powers of God? Because all things are held together from the north, from the throne room of God. How do we know that geomagnetism is a myth? Well, because geophysicists are scientists and scientists cannot tell us why the compass points to the north and that's why your compass points to the north, that is the throne room of God. How do we know that the throne room of God is in the north and that this statement is true? You say, is heaven far away? No. Because Barry spent decades of his life doing extensive reading, studying, and research on the vast amount of scientific information given here. In Psalm 48 and verse 2, you know the scripture? Beautiful for situation, the joy of the whole earth is Mount Zion on the sides of the north, the city of the great king. And that verse clearly demonstrates, when interpreted properly, well, according to this guy anyway, that if an individual stood at the North Pole and held a compass out in front of him or her, that compass would point straight up to the throne room of God, above, in the first heaven, which according to Barry, you say, is heaven far away? No. Is not too far away. And by not too far away, Barry is referring to this short distance here. So next time you look at a compass, remember, the compass is not pointing to a mythical godless magnetic North Pole. It is in fact pointing north, right out of our solar system. North, right out of our solar interstellar neighborhood. North, beyond our galaxy. North, beyond our local galactic group. North, out beyond the Virgo supercluster. North beyond the local superclusters of our sector of the universe. North, to the edge of the observable universe. North, through the unobservable universe. And then finally, north, one more time, into the first heaven, into God's throne room, and right up through the underside of the seat on God's throne. So next time you use a compass, keep in mind and find comfort in the fact that the needle is not pointing to some mythical northern magnetic pole, but is instead pointing directly at God's ass. Well, according to this guy anyway. That's why your compass points to the north, that is the throne room of God. Scientists cannot tell us why the compass points to the north, I'll tell you why. All things are held together from the north, from the throne room of God.